I loved so many of them because as an actor, you tend to want to put yourself, some of yourself into each role you play. You kind of love something about each character. And as soon as I find myself saying, oh, Ed's my favorite character, well then suddenly my mind just gets full of Dark Mousy and, and, and Kurtz Weber and, and Kugaji from Sayuki and, and oh my gosh, Yukito from Air and uh, Five from Tsubasa. Gaul from Generator Gaul, and even Ikaku from Bleach, and thank you, baby, thank you. And which one would you like? Aww. <laughs> you should have it. Aww. Aww. I've always got a compensation for help and assistance. Um, yeah, so I, it would be hard to pick one, you know? Um, but then, one that's most like me, I really think that I'm a lot like Hiroki Takasugi from Princess Nine. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love him, but I'm kind of a mixture between Hiroki and Kurtz Weber. Because <laughs> Kurtz is kind of a perv. <laughs> Not implying that I'm a perv. I'm just a Secretly. perv. I'm a partial. No, it's not even perv, it's just like, you know, girls. I mean, he likes girls and... Excuse me, but so do I. So, uh, <laughs> it's just a guy thing, sorry. But, um, so yeah, kind of a, a Kurtz Weber Hiroki. So, uh, Kurtz Rogi would be my character. Yes? Uh, what would be the advice you would give to someone who's entering the voice acting industry? Well, you guys are... <clears throat> We get this question a lot. Somebody, he asked, for those of you that didn't hear, what would you suggest to somebody who wants to get involved in the voice acting business? The two things we always say, number one, act. <laughs> Be an actor. Not, voice, not a voice person. Do you know why, a lot of people don't realize this, do you know why dubs used to be so bad? Remember? Does anybody remember when dubs used yep. to be really, really bad? You know why? You know why they were? Connect. Because back when they were doing those, they were hiring radio guys. They were hiring radio voices because, hey, they're a radio. They, they're, they do voices, voice, they speak professionally, they work with a microphone, let's get some radio guys to do it. Well, they're not actors. So the stuff was real stilted, you know what I mean? And, and, and it was kind of bad. And, and it wasn't until about 10 or 12, 13 years ago that some companies started saying, hey, you know what? Why don't we hire, let's try hiring some actors to play these characters and see how it goes. And, and dubs just exponentially improved after that. Um, so my first encouragement to you is if you're, if you're interested in voice acting is get as much experience as you possibly can in acting. It's not about funny voices. I get a lot of people who say, you know, hey, I, I could do a great Homer Simpson. Or, I sound like you. <laughs> but there's one problem with that. You know what it is? We already have a Yoda. There's already somebody doing Homer Simpson. Chances are you're not going to get to play Homer Simpson. So it's not about sounding like other people. It's not about imitating other characters. It's about being able to play a role, act a role. A lot of you guys know I don't sound terribly different in every character I play. Why? Because the goal is not to change your voice. The goal is to play the character. You follow me? Robert De Niro. Everybody knows that actor, right? He's yeah. played 100 characters in movies, right? Still sounds like Robert De Niro. <laughs> Am I right? Why? Because the point is not to change your voice. The point is to play a different role. So it's the, very, it's the same, you know? So where, you know, you know, Kurtz, Kurtz Weber, maybe on a quiet moment, may sound like Dark Mousy, but if you watch the show, the character is very different. So um, acting is really very important. Get as much experience as you can in acting. You guys, you can get involved in community theater, school programs, uh, church programs, all kinds of things that you can get involved in to build your skills as an actor. And the second thing, which is equally important, actually even more important is, you gotta be where the work is. You have to live where they do that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, um, you know, you could be the greatest voice actor that ever lived, and if you live in Kentucky, <laughs> chances are you're not gonna get any opportunities to voice act because it's not done there. 
In fact, you know, I've had the hardest time breaking into some of the shows in Los Angeles. Now, I've got a huge resume, right? They know I can do the work, but what's the problem? I don't live in Los Angeles. A lot of you know about Orochimaru from Naruto. They really wanted me to play that role, but I don't live in LA. And so a lot of people were concerned with giving me a role, and then I come and record, and then I go back to Houston, and somebody realizes, oh, we want to change the pronunciation of this character's name. <laughs> so, you know, uh, when I was there, I recorded Kitsune, and somebody decided they wanted Kitsune. So what, am I, am I going to fly back to LA to say Kitsune on time? So you, you can understand, it's, if you're not right there where the work is done, then, you know, it's, it's really hard to, to do it. So those are the two main things, acting and location. And the five main places where voice acting work is done, Vancouver, Houston, Dallas, Los Angeles, New York. And Toronto. Toronto, one Toronto. That's right, there is some stuff going on yeah. in Toronto. Yes, so there you go. Yes, sir. Oh, no, I would never say that. They're different. They're different. It's hard to compare. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, talk, let's take Full Metal, for example. Um, when, I saw, when, I, when I first got cast in that show, there were months before we started recording. And that gave me time to look on the internet and find out what I could about Full Metal Alchemist. Well, I started getting really scared because the show is so good. And Romy Park, who plays Ed, she's amazing. No, no, no question about it, she's awesome. So I, I went back to Funimation, I'm like, okay, just FYI, I can't do it like she does it, because she's a girl, among other things, and I can't sound like that. And they're like, well, that's okay, because the Japanese want you, they like your audition, they actually want the English version of Ed to sound more masculine, more like a boy than a, than a girl. And of course, we, we all know, you know, when they start screaming and yelling, they sound like girls. So, that's okay, but it's different. And I gotta tell you something, um, when I, I was just in Tokyo, how many of you saw the little video on YouTube with me and Romy? Um, I got to meet her, and she, uh, she's like, one of the first things she said was, we're sitting across the table eating dinner, and she says to me, I want to hear your Ed. <laughs> And I was like, well, I want to hear your Ed. <laughs> so we were talking back and forth at dinner, doing lines back and forth. And um, I would never want to try to compare the two. There is, there is some bad Japanese anime, bad dubs, I mean, performance-wise, and there's plenty of bad American dubs. And there's great Japanese, and there's great American, English dubs. I mean, you know, it, you know what? I don't speak Japanese. But, and I, I don't know how many of you do, probably a lot of you don't, I'm gonna assume, because it's a tough language. But I've talked to people who are translators and people who know the language very well. There are a lot of dubs that are really badly acted. I mean, there are. There, there, there are that are like way melodramatic. I mean, way over the top. But, you know, some of them are good and some of them are bad, and some English dubs are good and some are bad, and some German dubs are good and some are bad. I mean, you can't really compare them because they're different. But um, there's certainly some that have turned out better than others. I think some of the highest compliments I've ever gotten have been people that said, I really didn't think much of the character in Japanese, but I really enjoyed your version of it. So that's one of the highest compliments that we can receive. And that doesn't happen all the time, but it's, it sure is nice to hear. Yeah, well, yes. I'm a huge fan of uh, um, Now, I know you said that you, when I talked to you previously, you seemed like where you went with Francis Dashford. Uh, yeah. But my question, sorry. Uh, my question is, like, the whole experience, like, were you surprised when you got cast in that role, considering how old the character was? Well, I was, he's talking about Chevalier, and I played a character named Dashwood, and he's this very, very old kind of a bad guy. He's an, he's an evil guy. And um, I rem he reminded me kind of like the Emperor from Star Wars. <laughs> and so um, Stephen had me come in and read for him, and um, as you can hear, I naturally have a very youthful voice. 
And so I was excited to try out for him because actors love to play roles against their type. Yes, uh, exactly. Um, so it's a lot of fun to, to play characters that are very different. I mean, I'll get cast as the young hero type a lot, but to get to play uh, characters that are very different from that is a great pleasure for an actor. Um, and Dashwood was, was a perfect example.